Item number four, ordinances and, res rev and resolutions. 4A, consider consideration of an action on City of Sugarland Resolution number 1814, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Sugarland, Texas, naming the bridge currently known as the Main Street Bridge as the Annette Williamson Wise Bridge. And I'm going to ask uh, former City Council member Dennis Palmer and uh, District 1 Council member Steve Porter and District 2 Council member Bridget Young. Uh, Dennis? I think you're going to introduce it for us, and you'll introduce our guests. Yes, I will, Mayor, and I am happy to do that. We have members of, of Annette's family here tonight. I want to recognize her son, Lowell, and his wife, Anna, and the, what would be Annette's grandson, Garrett. And then next to them is would be her granddaughter, Rachel Doolin, and then joining us a number of family members also, in-laws and other things. And we also have members of the community here in, in addition in support tonight to, to say that they really are a this. Please, Dennis. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. It's good to see each one of you, Mr. Bogart, City staff. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here, be a part of this presentation. Uh, let me kind of just get you started here. This is, we want to start in 2008, but I'm going to digress quickly here. This is Annette painting the bridge in 2008. But we really, to get the depth and, and, and breadth of what Annette has done for the community artistically and everything, we really need to go back to the bicentennial. Some of us may remember that. That was 1976. But you're seeing some pictures of what we may say fire plugs, but uh, they're fire hydrants. And they were painted uh, like the Minutemen and, and different different patriotic things for as a part of the bicentennial. In fact, Annette's, one of hers, uh, Benjamin Franklin, was chosen as one of nine to be in America's bicentennial book. So that gives you some national recognition <coughs> of what Annette did. Also locally, she designed and helped create the Sugarlands commemorative coin, which I just happened to have a picture of one of those from, from uh, the family. So if you'll mind me, I'm going to get this started with you guys here so you can take a look at it. But I think they want it back. <laughs> But this uh, coin is also at the Smithsonian right now. So that tells you how recognized oh, cool. that some of her work was. Moving on to 1986 to the Texas Sesquicentennial, or also known as the 150th birthday of the state of Texas. Annette had the idea, the concept to paint the bridge, as we were talking about, that goes from Main Street North into the hill. And so it was her concept, her idea, to paint what we call the panels or the sections of the bridge. And you can see Annette painting these here. So I'm going to kind of go through these. She made this a community event. She had friends like uh, Joan Hansen and other friends came in. Uh, Joan was definitely helped to recruit student artists to be out there both in the 03 and 08 efforts. And you may say, well, why did we do the, the bridge in 03 and 08? Well, the, the truth is that after 17 years from the time from 86 to 2003, there had been some degradations of the paintings, started it, did it all over again, but we didn't really do a good job of prepping the site good. So in comes 08, we need to redo it again, and then a guy named Mike Hobbs in the city really stepped up that time, and they power washed the bridge. They really came in and put a great foundation white paint on it. And 10 years later, the pictures out there are still in pretty good shape, despite Harvey and all his friends and everybody else dropping through. So it is really good. It was a lot of, not everybody got a paintbrush out there. So, so some of us were cleanup guys. But as you can see, it was hard work. I mean, they're laying down, doing this out in the hot sun. Some of the pictures, I don't have them all. Randy Koslowski took a local guy, took a lot of pictures. But a lot, a lot of them have, well, you can see an umbrella in the back back there. But a lot of them had umbrellas out there because it was August one time that we did this in October another time. Uh, that's 2003 is a picture of Samuel May Williams panel which is very accurate because if you look if your own property along in the hill area if you look at your tax description it says SM Williams and a track number. He was Stephen F. Austin's corporate secretary and that is one of Austin's very first tracts of land that he had in the state of Texas. Highly historical little area right there. 
This is the east side of the bridge in 2003. This is the west east side of the bridge again in 2008. It is still out there. This, this is the actual representation now. West side in 03 and the west side in 08. The best way to view the bridge is not to stop right in the middle of the bridge. Uh, it is an active little area coming through there. But there is a pedestrian bridge on the east side that's easy to park your car somewhere at one of the park areas on First Street or uh, the newly renovated uh, park just, just up from there. Take a walk through there, come down and see that. It's a quaint little area right along in there. Also, you can see the hill sign as you come into the hill because this is north coming into the hill. And that's a very it's nice, again, saying that it's one of Sugarland's first communities. That's the 08. The artists were very excited to finish the project, as you can see. I'm not sure. I'm not, well, that's a pretty good vertical jump there <laughs> when you look at it. Uh, in 2011, this is Annette's obituary. I think it's very important to think the last sentence on that. It said, Annette, in lieu of flowers and everything, wanted donations to the senior citizens of, city of Sugar Land. That just shows in her last act, she was a community-spirited person. Uh, I bring back the first picture again of Annette uh, that you saw, because I think if you look at it, you can see how happy he is she's doing what she's doing. Uh, the next steps are staff has gone internally and worked to design some placards for the bridge or things. We also, we have a poster board or storyboard or, or really more of a historical marker is the better way of saying it, that would go somewhere out there close to where that sign is that you saw in the hill. Each one of these, it, this is a little bit more life size of it, what it might look like with regards to be on one end of the bridge and another one just like this on the other end. And then we have a representation of the historical marker like this with the verbiage, again, that staff has put together. So they've done a great job of doing that. I want to thank Cindy Dees and all the staff for really pulling that together, that we've worked closely together to get to this presentation. Uh, we're excited about being here. Uh, the proposed signs, just to give you a map of where they would be uh, at the end of each bridge, and again, kind of the star where it might be for the historical marker for this. Uh, the recommended action, I think you've got family support here, you've got community support, you've got staff recommending this, so it would be a recommendation to approve resolution number 18-14 to name the bridge the Annette Williamson Wise Bridge, and I would be happy to answer any questions, and staff is here to answer any other questions that I can. not Thank you, Dennis. Amesh. Mayor, I don't have any questions. I just want to thank everyone who brought this forward, Council Member Palmer, Council Member Porter, and Council Member Young. These are the types of projects that we need to enhance our community. I mean, these are there's so many opportunities like this, but they only come to us unless someone brings it up. Someone has to start somewhere. So thank you for doing that, Dennis. Thank you for all of you for your support and the family. I never had a chance to meet her, but she sounds like an amazing lady, and I'm glad we get to honor her spirit uh, through this plaque in this bridge so um, if you need a motion well I'm gonna leave a motion for one of the yeah. guys who brought it so thank you thanks Amy. Okay. And to the family first of all I want to start with I'm sorry for your loss she really does sound like a remarkable woman and she really left her mark um, on, on our community with this bridge and obviously with the Smithsonian having that and just all the amazing things she's touched many many lives and by naming this bridge she will be touching many more. Certainly seems like the wise decision to do so. <laughs> Steve. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was approached by a couple members of the community and asked if we could bring this forward. Uh, and as you know, or what may know, that it takes two council members to put something on the agenda. And so I asked council member district two Bridget to support me bringing it to the uh, agenda. Uh, the last meeting we had, we had a workshop on this item and every single one of my colleagues uh, enthusiastically supported this. Uh, it's uh, a wonderful thing to do. Uh, and I would be privileged to make the motion to approve this. Thank you, Steve. Carol. I just wanted to thank you, Dennis, and my fellow council members for bringing this to us. And this is just a wonderful <coughs> way to remember just an amazing woman like Annette for her contributions to our community. Thank you. Bridget. Thank you. 
Um, Dennis, would you mind going back to the first picture? Sure, happy to. So I wanted to. Um, well, I'm gonna, if you're okay, I will go to there. The rest is going 17 back. That's it. And I think that Kristen Lytle, who is in mm. the audience, will recognize the T-shirt and then as Annette is wearing because that T-shirt was designed by our own Mary Von Tunglin, a, a former council member, in um, commemoration of the first May Fest on the Hill, which we created in order to restore, start raising money to restore the Lake, then Lakeview Auditorium. And Annette was the first, one of the first people to jump forward in this grassroots effort and put together so much, worked so hard to help make this happen. And she truly was a wonderful community person. And, and, and that's the reason that Sugarland is such a great place to live, because we have such wonderful people like Annette Wise among us. So I will second the motion. Mayor, I'd like to also add to Councilmember Young's comments. Due to my editing here, I left out a lot of stuff that Annette did, OK? She did gift cards. She did thank you cards type of things that were used in fundraisers. She just did a lot more than I would portray tonight. But I really just do thank you for bringing that, because there's I could have gone for another five or 10 minutes here. Oh. Yeah. Mary. Oh, I have a few comments. So first of all, Dennis, thank you for the presentation. Um, Anna, I want to give a special thank you to Anna Wise, who resurrected this project at a meeting of council. We were at a lunch, and we started talking about the Hill and how much we loved our history. And Steve and, and Anna and I got to speak, and it was so wonderful that you've kicked this off again. And Steve, I applaud that you picked it up and kept it going. Um, I also wanted to say um, thank you to the Friends of Old Sugar Land. Um, that is a group that many of these individuals belong to. Uh, Kristen Lytle has been a, uh, a steward. She has run that for 27 years. They have, they have memorabilia. They have photo albums. They did a cookbook. Um, in memory of Annette Williamson Wise, and have brought a book for each one of us, a cookbook for each one of us. So after the meeting, if you'd like one. Um, and uh, um, what I would ask, and I, I'm just, I'm, your mother was amazing um, and did so much. And thankfully, I'm also on the uh, Sugar Land Heritage Foundation. And thankfully, and Betty Anheuser is here, who is a board member. And just a few weeks ago, we were talking about some of the artwork that we have. Um, Kristen also shared with me that she actually got some interviews with Annette. So we're hoping, I know she's going to be making a copy for the family. And I mentioned to uh, uh, Betty that we're going to be getting a copy as well. Um, and Annette also did, which I thought was so interesting, a coloring book which is something else that we want to have that we have uh, in the museum. So um, the only thing that I would ask staff, Cindy, Allen, is um, when we go to do the dedication with the plaques, that we make sure we give plenty of notice to um, the Friends of Old Sugar Land and the people in the Hill. It only got posted late Sunday night, and there's a number of people who haven't been able to attend. And maybe we can have a party at Lonnie Green, and if the city can't, um, can't sponsor it, maybe some of us, and I'd be happy to volunteer with you, Kristen, Anna, for all of us to get together. And let's have a party celebrating her in Lonnie Green and the dedication. So thank you again. Um, thank you, Council Member Porter and, and Young and uh, Dennis. And Kristen Lytle, special thank you to you. I think this is a great way to remember your mom. And this is a great way for the family members to remember the legacy that she left behind. I've got a motion by Councilmember Porter. I've got a second by Councilmember Young. Any other questions? You vote at this time, please. <coughs> Amy, did you break it? It, it doesn't like me. Maybe it's sending a subtle hint. I, I, Let's do a hand vote. All in favor? And it passes unanimously. Thank you all for coming tonight.